everyone, how's it going? It's March, and you know what? I'm so excited for the weather to start getting nicer so we can go for bike rides and um, just be outside more without our faces like freezing off. Yeah. <laughs> what are you guys excited for? Um, today, you guys, we're starting a new series. And we asked Pastor Matt if he would come and kick it off for us. So let's go see what he has to say, okay? Yeah. Yeah? Can you pull out this coloring sheet for me? I'd love to! Awesome! What's um, wrong? How am I supposed to color it if I don't have any crayons? Here, have some water! Oh, thanks! How am I supposed to get a drink if I don't have a glass? Sometimes it can be really frustrating to be asked to do something or to want to do something and not to have the tools or the resources, the things that you need to make that stuff happen. Well, in the Bible, one of the things that we are asked to do, and that's really good for us to do, is to resist the devil. But how do you resist the devil if you don't have the tools? One of the cool things about God is that he always gives us the things that we need to do what it is that he's asking us to do. And here in the Bible, it talks about the armor of God. So, in this kind of big battle that's going on um, where, where the devil is trying to get us to do all sorts of naughty things that God doesn't want us to do, God says he gives us what we need to resist what the devil is asking us to do or trying to, to trick us into doing. Things like um, the blessed breastplate of righteousness, uh, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, those ones, the shield of faith, those ones are my favorite. What I like about the breastplate of righteousness is that I think this is something that God puts on to me to protect me against what it is that the devil does. The helmet of salvation. If you're going to go into a big fight, you need a helmet on. And God gives us a helmet of salvation so that it keeps us safe up there. Also gives us the shield of faith so when the devil throws these fiery darts at us, well then they get extinguished. They get put out on this protective shield and the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God. This is something that we can use whenever it is that the devil is trying to trick us. I love what God does for us because he always provides exactly what we need to stand up, to stand our ground whenever the devil comes around to try to trick us into doing naughty things. This is why it's so important. So important to be listening to the lessons that Pastor Anna is going to be teaching you over these next few weeks because this is, she's going to teach you some of the things that God has provided for you to do what it is that he's asked you to do, to stand firm against the devil and his evil, wicked, tricky schemes. Have fun. Awesome. Thanks so much, Pastor Matt. Okay, kids, so from this, who can guess what our series is about this, this next couple months? <laughs> That's right, it's about the armor of God, so let's go check it out. Hello everyone and welcome to the city. My name is Anna. And I'm Dane. And we are just so excited that you are here today with us. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I just love living in the city. Like, it's just so good. There's something here for everyone, whether you want to go to the museum or see a show, or you like skateboarding, or I don't know, you want to go to the dog park. Yeah. So many different things, just for everyone. I mean, there's no other place in the world where you can get a hot dog in one corner, from a cart nonetheless, and then a few blocks down, you pay to have your picture taken with your favorite movie star. Like, so cool. Did you know that you can even ride to the 104th floor of a skyscraper. And once you're up there, you can see three different states. The 104th floor. Wow, that's way up there. Way up there. Everybody in the city has got somewhere to go, and there's so many different ways to get around. But what's crazy is most people here don't even own their own cars. 
They walk or use the subway, take a taxi, or even the bus. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. And I think I see it coming now. Oh, it's just on any ordinary bus. No way. This bus is full of fun, and here it comes now. Yes, and today's crazy game is City Trivia. So, we're gonna ask you questions and see if you know the answers to them. So tell whoever you're with or type it in the comments and let's see. Are you guys ready? Ready? I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's, let's go. go. Which of these cities has the most skyscrapers? A. Singapore. B. Tokyo. C. Chicago. Or D. New York City. Hmm. Which do you think? Do you guys have an answer? Okay, so the correct answer is New York City. Wow. Did you know that the Big Apple has 232 skyscrapers? That's crazy. 232. That's a lot of super tall buildings. Yeah. Okay, on to our next question. The next question is, true or false, the first ever Krispy Kreme donut came from a city in North Carolina. Oh, I just love donuts. Oh, me too. I could have a donut right now. Or like 12. Okay, so true or false, guys? The answer is true. Ooh. I am so glad that that city shared its invention with us. Like, oh. so good. Yes, so good. And did you know that there's one just two blocks down the road from us right now? So we can go. We'll go soon, okay? I'm sorry, what? I was thinking about donuts. We're gonna go get donuts, okay? Oh, yeah. Goodness. Okay. Okay, on to our last trivia question. Here we go. There are several neighborhoods in the city of San Francisco that are built on top of what? Is it A, birds, mm. B, landfills, D, icebergs, or D, hairballs? What? <coughs> that one's got to be a joke. Uh, uh, I don't know. Okay, do you guys have your answers? Hmm. Did you know that the answer is landfills? What? I know, but you'd be amazed at some of these cities. They've turned this beautiful pile of garbage, well, not a beautiful pile of garbage, yeah, but these piles awesome. of garbage into beautiful neighborhoods and parks. Isn't that pretty cool? Yeah, I guess so. Oh man, I love the fun bus. It's great. Yeah. I take the fun bus as much as I can. So awesome. City life is just the best. And not just because there are a million things to see and do. What really makes this place special are all the different people who live here. You've got people who love steak and people who love sushi. People who work in tall skyscrapers and people who work in underground subway stations. Some people really like listening to rap music and other people really enjoy opera. <laughs> really, when I think about it, the best thing about the city is the people that live here. Yeah. And you know what? One of those people is my favorite. It's Joe Miller. She's mm -hmm. an award-winning an award-winning city reporter. Mm -hmm. uh, she goes out into the streets to find some really great people who bring this city to life. Look, it's time. Oh. Can you pull it out? Can we go. watch it? Let's go check in. Hey there folks, I'm Joe Miller coming at you live each and every day as I take to the streets to give you all the deets. Around this city, there are some awesome people that I am so excited for you to get to know. I mean, it's pretty hard to stay still and chill when this place is a treasure trove of talent, coolness, and um, basically everyday heroes. From a musician whose songs you're gonna be humming all day, to a pro skateboard shredder who's got some crazy moves up his sleeves, this place is full of people who do everyday things in ways you'd never expect. I mean, this city is totally the place to be. Now, before we hit the streets, I thought I'd tell you a little about myself. As I said before, I'm Joe, and for as long as I can remember, I have wanted to be a news reporter. I mean, when I was little, I even used to interview my favorite stuffed animals. So basically, this hard-hitting, street-talking, news-getting, investigative reporting gig is totally my personal dream job. Even when I was first starting out, the news was always my favorite thing to watch. The latest reports, the interesting people, crazy stories, it's just the best! Like
like those feel-good stories of when Tabby the feline phenomenon meowed her way to stardom in a riveting rendition of the hit Baby Shark. But then there were some stories that made me pretty sad, like times when the news would report how littering was creating so much trash on the street that it was getting caught in gutters and making a mess, or even when people were hurting other people. It was really hard to watch that kind of stuff. I did some investigative reporting and realized that all of this is happening because there is a battle going on. Yeah, no joke, a legit battle. But the real deal with this battle is we can't see it. I know, crazy, right? Like, how's that even possible? But that's because it's a spiritual battle going on between God, who is like my favorite ever, and the devil, who is the worst. He is our enemy, which basically means his main goal is to ruin our relationship with God and others. That goes against everything that God wants for our lives. You know, this whole battle thing can seem crazy to think about, but I'm here with an amazing inside scoop. God has given us exactly what we need every day for us to stand strong in this battle and win. It's called the armor of God, and it's got everything we need to stand firm against the enemy. So, my mission, get the down low on what's happening here in the city and find all kinds of amazing people who put their everyday armor to good use. That's it for today, though. So, stay tuned for the next episode of Joe on the Go. Thanks, Joe. I can't wait to hear from these people about how they use that everyday armor in their everyday life. It just, it's what makes this city super special. But let's talk about some of the things that Joe said first. So we've got some questions for you. And if you think you know the answer, comment below, tell who you're with, and let's, let's do this. You guys yeah. ready? Okay, so the first question, Joe mentioned a battle. And did she say that was a battle that we could see or that we can't see? Joe told us that there's a very real battle going on. And even though we can't see it, we have to be ready to fight every day. Mm -hmm. What did Joe say that battle was against? You guys know? Joe told us that the battle was between God and the devil. So did Joe tell us that the devil was our friend or our enemy? That's right. Joe uh, told us the devil is our very worst enemy. Joe mentioned earlier that God has given us everything we need to win the battle against our enemy. And who remembers what that's called? You guys got it? It's called the full armor of God. God. Armor is something to wear that can protect you from harm. God's armor is completely invisible, but that doesn't mean that it's not real. Even though we can't see God's armor with our eyes, when we put it on every single day, it will make us strong and give us God's power. I've got a symbol for each piece of armor and that will help you remember what it is for. Okay, do you guys see this picture? How many pieces of armor do you see? I see six. Okay, that's right. The first piece of armor that God has given us is the belt of truth. Then there's the armor of godliness, the good news boots, and we need the sword of faith. The helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, sorry, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, too. Every day, we can put on the full armor of God, and we'll be able to stand strong against any evil that comes our way. And that's what we're learning today. So everyone, stand up with us, and we're going to say our need to know. So you guys ready? Ready. Okay. So put on. Put on. God's armor. God's armor. Okay, let's do that again. I want you guys to do it in like your strongest voices, okay? Ready. Put on. Put on. God's armor. God's armor. Good job. Thanks. That was a good strong voice. Thanks. I think you guys have got it. I think so. So. We need all this armor because, like we've been saying, there's a real battle going on. I've got to fill you in on how it all started. So here, take a look at this. Even though you can't see it, there's a spiritual battle taking place between God and the devil over the hearts of each person on earth. God is fighting for people to know who he is and how much he loves them. But the devil, his enemy, is evil 
and tries to trick us into believing lies about God. Lies like, God doesn't really love us, or that we shouldn't trust or obey God. The Bible tells us that the devil was a beautiful and powerful angel who once served God. But because the devil was full of pride, he thought he was more powerful than God and tried to take over heaven. His attempt failed because no one is more powerful than God. So God threw him and his followers down from heaven. Since that time, the devil has made evil plans to trick God's people into listening to him instead of listening to God. You're probably wondering if we should be afraid of the devil. The answer is no. He may be sneaky, but we don't need to be afraid of him. When we decide to follow Jesus, God makes us a part of his army and gives us powerful armor to fight anything the devil tries to use against us. In Ephesians 6, each piece of armor is a symbol for how God protects us from the devil's evil plans. The first thing we put on is the belt of truth. It makes us able to spot the devil's lies. We also put on the armor of godliness, which helps us make right choices. When we put the good news boots on our feet, we have the courage to go and tell people about Jesus. This helps God's army grow, and the devil can't stand it. We get the shield of faith to help us trust God and block anything the devil tries to send our way. We wear the helmet of salvation to help us remember we are a part of God's family and nothing can separate us from His love. When we carry the sword of the Spirit, which is the Bible, we have the power to stand strong by using God's words which defeat the devil. He may want to take us down, but the truth is, he can't. God already won the battle over evil when he brought Jesus back to life. And one day, he will remove the devil and his bad angels forever. Until then, we can grow in our friendship with God each day as we spend time with him and get ready for battle. We can put on God's armor. That story is so important because it shows us that our enemy is real. Knowing who our enemy is and what he's all about will help us in our battle to defeat him. That's right. And the good news for us is that God gave us everything that we need to fight this battle. When we put on all of God's armor, the enemy doesn't stand a chance. So you may be wondering, what does this look like in real life? Hmm. How, God's armor, real life? I don't know. Hmm. Well, we have an example for you of someone that put on God's armor. So take a look at this picture of Jen. So Jen is a kid just like you guys. Jen tries her best to put on each piece of God's armor every day. She's learned that when she doesn't put on God's armor, it's harder to do the right thing. And if she does make a wrong choice, it makes her feel like maybe God doesn't love her as much, which is the opposite of the truth. Opposite. But when she puts on the full armor of God, she's able to say no when she's tempted to do something wrong. And it's easier for her to tell others how much God loves them. Mm -hmm. And when she's having a bad day, she remembers the truth that God loves her and is working out the good for her life. So Jen knows that she needs to put on God's armor in order to stand strong every day. Just like Jen, you guys can put on God's armor too. When we put the full armor on, the enemy doesn't stand a chance. Okay, now we are going to put on God's armor together. Here, watch this. Every day, I will wear the full armor of God. I put on the belt of truth so I can fight the devil's lies. I put on the armor of godliness to protect my heart and do what's right. I put on the good news boots so I'll be ready to show God's love all day. I hold up the shield of faith to block anything the enemy sends my way. I put on the helmet of salvation so I'll remember God will always love me. I use the sword of the Spirit because God's word is my best weapon against the enemy. Now I stand firm and pray. Great! To practice putting on some armor, I have a fun game for us to play. I love games! You ready? Today's game is called Armor Up, and here's how you play. Each of you will have to put on a full suit of armor. Now at home, because you probably don't have a full suit of armor laying around, I want you to find something that can be your armor so you can play the game with us. You'll need a helmet, some body armor, a shield, a sword, a belt, and some boots. 
Okay, so if you don't actually have those things at home, that's okay, because we don't have all of them at home either. Mm -hmm. So maybe you get like a pillow for your shield, mm -hmm. or take the tie thing from your house coat for your belt, a sweater or a vest or something, a toque, I don't know, whatever you have. So pause the video, go find your stuff so you can play with us. Okay, you guys ready? We're gonna race here, and we would love for you guys to race along with us at home, okay? So, let's count it down from three. Three, two, one, go! Ah! Hey, I forgot how to tie something. My boots! Boots on the what? Make sure you take pictures to post of yourselves and all your armor or whatever you found to be your armor today. So just like we put armor on in that game, we can put on God's invisible armor every day so that we're able to stand strong. Mm -hmm. All throughout the Bible, we see people using worship as a weapon to defend themselves against the enemy. That's because when we worship God, we're declaring that God is more powerful than anything or anyone that would ever try to harm us. When we're in the middle of a battle, we don't have to fear one bit. God is always with us. So now we can stand firm with God and pray, which is exactly what we're going to do right now. So everyone, let's bow our heads, close our eyes, keep our hands to ourselves, and pray. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for giving us your full armor. Each piece is super important, and we love that you gave them to us for our fight against the enemy. Um, we know that you will help us stand firm against the devil's lies and tricks. We know you're greater than anything that we face. And we love you. Amen. Amen. Remember, we have God's power with us, and we're ready to face anything that might be thrown our way. So you guys have an awesome week, and we'll see you back here again. Bye. I am so excited for this series just to learn how we can use God's armor in our everyday lives. Yeah. Um, so in the series we provided for you, we set out some challenges for this next few months. Yeah, it would be awesome. So okay, over the next two months, guys, um, as a family, you guys work on these, okay? There's going to be lists. We're going to send out a newsletter for you guys, um, so you'll see what's all on there. But um, if you post pictures of yourselves doing e any of these challenges, then you'll get two bucks for that. Or so, email them to us, send them to us, yeah, however. Yeah, Facebook or email, whatever, however it works for you. But just send us a picture of you guys doing these challenges as a family, okay? And you'll get some three bucks for that for you guys. And at the end of this series, if you guys complete 10 or more of the challenges that are listed there, then you can enter your family in for um, a prize in a draw. Yeah. So... It's gonna be exciting. Try your best. It'll be awesome. It's so worth it. It'll be fun. Who doesn't love some extra tree bucks? Oh, yeah. And, and prizes? Family prizes? Yeah. So plus you're doing all these things as a family. So make sure awesome. that you work on these and submit them because we miss seeing you, so we want to see you. So this is a way we can see you. And it's a way that you can have fun as a family. So make sure you check it out. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so today we're singing Greater. So head on over to the YouTube link and worship with us. And then once you've done that, you can head over to the One Drink, oh gosh, the One Drive link for small group time with your families. But remember, at 9 a.m. Sunday mornings, we are on Zoom for small group time and we would love to have you join us. Yeah. Um, because we started a new series today, that means that you've got a new memory verse as well. So we're going to teach it to you. Are you ready for this? Okay. I'll say it first, and then Janessa, you say it with everyone else, okay? Okay. Sound good. So put on. Put on. God's armor. God's armor. And then you can remain strong. And then you can remain strong. Against the devil's evil plan. Against the devil's evil plan. And that's in Ephesians 6, 11. Ephesians 6, 11. Good job, guys. Nice. So work on that over the next few months. Send it in to us when you have it memorized. Yeah. We love seeing you guys memorize God's word. Um, and I think that's all we have for today. Yeah. So have an amazing week, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.